or onto the uh, master warrant, master plans warrant article, or the warrant article for the master plan, yeah. or should I say the plan to plan the master plan? Yeah. Um, do we have anyone from planning? Jason, do I see you back there? You well, we're looking forward to hearing from you so much. <laughs> I assume you saw the uh, the video snippet from that <coughs> meeting. I did. I had an opportunity. Okay, great. To do that. So tell us why our thinking is wrong, or could other ways be improved. Okay. So let me just. So first of all, um, I did just for your reference, I, this is the master plan that we have right now, this binder. It's a very large, uh, unworkable, unusable binder. Um, it dates back to 1985. Um, sections here and there have been updated over time. But really, I mean, 34-year-old master plan, basically. And it's not you know, something that's really worker, uh, user friendly or, or workable. Um, so really what we're proposing here is to basically, ultimately after we go through phase one, which we're requesting for this uh, cycle, and later phase two, the ultimate master plan will replace this that comes from that. So it'll be replacing that document. Um, a few of the questions that I saw from your video, uh, one question was there was concerns as to whether once we're done with this, will this plan, the new plan sit on the shelf? Um, I would say absolutely not, um, because once we go through the process, this phase one process, and then phase two, and have a plan adopted, that plan, I would recommend having something like an implementation committee, which we've had in the past, in places where I've worked in the past, um, which, you know, make sure that the recommendations of that final plan are adopted and, um, <coughs> you know, administered by uh, that Excuse committee. Me. So... So there'll be something, so it won't collect dust on the shelf. It'll be something that will be worked upon, worked on. And as far as another comment about the length of the plan, I can't tell you how many pages today it would be because we, you know, we haven't gone into the process yet, but I can tell you it won't be this. The planning board, you know, is adamant that we have something more concise, mm -hmm. something that's user friendly, something that people can come to the, you know, go online, come to the office and look at. They can see the different sections, uh, components, elements of the plan, and you know identify things quickly. Um, questions about the beach master plan? It's actually the beach master plan is technically the neighborhood plan of this. So basically, it would be incorporated by reference, as was discussed. We aren't the HBAC is responsible for for amending that plan. We aren't proposing changes to that. It would be incorporated by reference in our new plan. Excuse me, Jason. Yes. Um, when did the HBAC get the authority to change the master plan? <coughs> I, I do know that they, like anyone else, can make suggestions to the planning board to change the master plan. For the well, Hampton Beach master plan? The Hampton but Beach plan. But it's the planning board that has the sole authority for changing the master plan. Is that correct? They, yes. They, they adopt, okay. well, they would adopt the, as they did with a recent amendment to that plan uh, a few months back, um, they would adopt the changes, but it's the HBAC who's been working on the Beach Master Plan. There is an RSA, I believe, that created the HBAC that that is one of their duties under the RSA. To advise. That's their duty to advise. Ad advi that is correct. Right. Right. But they've been going through the process of that Beach Plan and, and um, right. updating it accordingly, and that, that's been going fine. But I just want to be opinion. clear on the authority. Get Joe Sixpack down the street could come yeah. to the planning board with a suggested change, right. and the planning board could adopt that change, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, so basically the article before you is for the phase one task. It's not, I know you say a plan to plan, but it's not really that. It's really a two-phase process. This fir first phase of it is the elements are having steering, a steering committee uh, formed and facilitated um, using uh, professional planning consulting services, um, working with the planning office, of course, and the, and the planning board. Um, there'd be um, intermunicipal coordination uh, with review and input on documents um, and coordination with various departments, land use boards, and commissions. Um, another very important component is, is one of the elements, uh, required elements of a master plan in New Hampshire is a vision chapter, a vision section. This phase one, there would be the visioning sessions and ultimately one of the products will be a draft vision chapter that would be ultimately part of the overall master plan. 
So there is, it's the start of the process there. There'll be outreach and coordination uh, with the public. Um, there would be some survey um, work in terms of surveying the public. Um, there's um, definitely more technical means of doing that these days um, and reaching out to the public where you get good response rates. Um, and also one of the products would be a master plan template which is going to lay out structurally what the phase two part which is the final master plan product would consist of the different elements likely for example this plan doesn't have an economic development chapter that's something we'd probably want to look at including there there's no um, you know coastal cli or climate or coastal uh, resource chapter, that's something we'd probably want to look at there, to look at things like sea level rise, uh, other issues of that nature. So it's to set that foundation for the overall update, but it's not real, but it's starting the process. It's not saying we're starting the process at phase two. This is starting the process. We'll have something in place when we go into phase two and ultimately do the full update. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I have as far as the process. I'd open it up to further questions. So your town master plan is from 1985? That's correct. It's from mm -hmm. It dates back to 1985, and like I said, some sections have been updated since. And are you aware of any prior attempts to create a new master plan for the town? To create a whole new master plan? I'm not. I know that they've updated over time chap chapters here and there, but that's why you ended up with this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Any uh Questions on the Master Plan One article and Jason's presentation. And Mr. Walters. Just uh, some historical clarification. Um, <coughs> the HBAC was established in June of 2003. I, as chairman of the Board of Selectmen, worked with stakeholders uh, to do that as a result of the 2001 Master Plan Committee that was established. And it's important to know which why it all came about is the stakeholders involved with that were DOT and DES and state parks. And it was an important initiative that took place. And, and a lot that's happened since has been good stuff. So Jason is right. And so the, I want just the public to know that that was, that was a lot of work. And at the time, we worked with Representatives Frank and O'Neill and others to, to get that. It's hard to believe it'll be 16 years in, in June. Um, I'm going to ask a question that my friend Mr. Mara uh, Who's, who's very astute, and, and, he, and he asked this last week, and it stuck in my mind, and, and it really goes back to what you just said about that big binder. Um, what are the goals? Do we have three goals in mind? So in other words, 18,000, and to your point, I think you said 18 mm -hmm. to, what, what word, I was laughing last week, you said to work on the project to present a project plan or something, I forget how you word it. No, but to create a plan to create a plan. Create a plan to create a plan. Yeah. So that being said, and, and you know, back in the days where, and I know Regina would be interested in this, we used to go to these seminars and talk with the Office of State Planning and they'd say, a, a plan is really this, and Mr. Welch would get a kick out of this, it's the status of any boards at the time or what's going on in communities. And so years later, we're back, at, now we're 2018, and I, I agree with what you're trying to do, but I just want to make sure that it's not going to be something that's never going to be, and we see plans out there now, and they're not really enacted, right? I mean, developers come in or get variances or whatever it is, and the beach people pointed that out in there. So that's my big question here is, to your points, and I think you, you hit on them last week, was I, I think there needs to be more meat in here of what is the objective, right? Some people would say, do we really need to do it? With, with this town is, is pretty much all land brought up and business space and everything else, so that, that's where I'm going at. I'm just kind of wondering where you are because you're the, you're the planners. So. Right. Well, I mean, the master plan, it is in the RSAs that it's the duty of the planning board to prepare and amend from time to time a master plan. And like I said, what we have here by and large is 34 years old. Um, I, I stated at the beginning of my talk here that once we have this uh, revamped master plan in place, the one thought in my experience that we would do is establish an implementation committee. That implementation committee ensures that plan doesn't sit on the shelf. It ensures that there's a committee, it would be a subcommittee of the planning board, I'm sure, mm -hmm. that would be you know, holding basically accountable the, the recommendations that are in there to make sure that people know what they are, that the, the appropriate um, authorities who are responsible for those recommendations <coughs> are looking at those. 
Um, so, I mean, those are things that I can tell you now that I would be looking at at the end of this process to ensure, because I agree, there, there's no way something like that should sit on a shelf and there's no way that it should be unusable. I mean, it's too important to the community. It's too important to the long range, you know, basically conservation and development, you could say, activities of the community. It's all based right there, everything we do. Um, but we can't really use that effectively. Thank you. I have nothing else. Anybody I else? Mr. Mora. You totally lost me. Okay. Which is probably usual for most people. If you were doing your current, we're called the vision, mm -hmm. and you don't have specific objectives of what they are, and you haven't, is my opinion, you also talked about we're going to create a committee. So maybe part of creating the committee would be part of A. Let's break it into A and B. The plan to create the plan is B, the final plan, which you're going to work on. A is what is supposed to be contained within this. How do you know you're going to be successful? You're spending $18,000. What are your goals? Clearly put down in black and white. They probably should only be three. They could be two. They could be one. But you're not clearly articulating what the end goal is. So when you finish the $18,000, you know you've hit the mark and you continue on. If not, you should be looking at it and say, what did we miss so we can continue on? But you don't have a, I'm not hearing a specific goal. I'm not hearing a specific objective. I'm totally lost. It's all, I was in IT. We, we, we had, a, we had, it was in IT, we had three sayings. One was, uh, this software, we all write software. This hardware, and you know what the hardware is, the machines and all that sort of stuff. And then we had good old IBM come in with the vaporware. And it was all talk. They had nothing written down into a vision they had. Some of the visions came through, most of them didn't. Some of them would work with you and help you to create the vision. So we'd, we really, we'd doing that, we would partner with them and do what they're doing. But you need approval after the $18,000. Who's the people going to make mistake that we really have a path to go on? You don't want to have the wrong path. I'm making this up, by the way, because I'm hoping you're going to have it all done right. But you could have path B and C. So you might have options that come out after you investigate. That's one big, thick book. And now I'm hearing it started in, in 2001, 2000 the beach yeah. down there, and yet you don't know what's in. So how do you object to it? The beach point plane will be in here. This will be done. This will not be done. This, these are the things that are in it. But along with that, you should clearly articulate, this is the most important one, what will not be in it. We had so many planes at, at the company I worked for, and I was a big guy in what's not in it, so you can understand what was in it. But it was so vague. So we specifically, this will not be done, this will not be done, and this will not be done. People had clear expectations. I'm not clear on what you're trying to do. I understand Hampton have a master plan for where you want to go into the future. I understand we need to have one. I'm not necessarily comfortable that you have a plan on putting it together if you don't have the objectives and expectations clearly articulated for the $18,000. It's just, well, we want to get a plan, have the plan. Well, Could no, you help I'll, me, please? I'll try to. So what, I mean, part of this, as I said, is the visioning sessions and establishing that draft vision chapter. In my experience in working on, on master plans elsewhere in the past, um, that's where your goals and objectives are set. When you have your, your committee, your master plan steering committee, and they're looking, holding these meetings, these visioning meetings, and working toward this chapter, that's where you're, <coughs> establishing your vision statement. That's where you're establishing your initial goals, goals and objectives of the project. I'm with you there. Therefore, that's that's, that's what I'm so, asking so about. We don't have, obviously, a specific answer on that, but we have a process here that the planning board's been talking about for a long time to establish those goals and objectives as we go into this um, master plan update. So I guess I'm a little, I think it's explained pretty well, just in my opinion. Um, not at all, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Did I have a? You may have the floor. Something. Go ahead. David has the floor. Anyway, you want eighteen thousand dollars. It's called Plan A. Can we call it Plan A? Sure. Right. Sure. Why can't you sit down with a group of people who are putting this together and come out? What are your clear objectives? One of the objectives I think might be, one of the objectives of this is going to be we're going to have clear objectives for the master plan. Clear objectives, which will have what we will do and what we won't do, as an example. 
Okay. <coughs> you probably might even have a timing. When do you plan to have it done? You get $18,000 and you're paying for people, you must have a target date by a certain date because you don't want to spend $36,000. Right. Okay. Do you have a response to that? Um, so, I mean, we would look, the article says, you know, has a date of December 31st, 2021 to be completed. We would hope that it would be much sooner than that. Um, but, you know, we think that it probably, maybe a year, year and a half. I mean, but, you know, the board has talked about it. We've talked with uh, the Rockingham Planning Commission. We've had them review our existing master plan, um, you know, at least, and, and help the planning board guide them in how to be, you know, establish this process because this is so um, unworkable at the moment. I mean, I think obviously our goal is, our ultimate goal is for the long range planning and conservation of the community. And the master plan is the basis for that. Um, and as we go through this visioning process and as we go through with the steering committee and working with the consultant on this, it's all really gonna come together, right? I don't know how else. To what are the expectations of your visiting group? What are they going to do? What are those expectations on A? That's what I'm asking. Right. To, to have a vision for the community, to have a template that outlines those chapters of the master plan that, um, that we anticipate would be in there, the elements like the economic development, the natural resources, the transportation elements, the housing elements. List those as the objectives. Historic, the historic uh, resources, uh, you know, coastal issues, things like that. There'll be chapters of the final master plan. So our, I guess you could say an objective would to be have to have those chapters in the plan. To me, those are elements of the plan. To me, that's those are objectives you have to have written down. <clears throat> I'll say the to you, so you know you hit the hold, on, hold on a second. I think that the point here is that we, all that list of stuff that you just yep. enumerated yep. is not in the warrant article, yep. and I and believe that is the nature of and the challenge be. that's being put forth. Is that how can we or even the voters endorse this appropriation with the article lacking the specificity that you are giving to us orally. That's the issue that I think that is being raised, sure. correct? Okay. Yes, sir. So but those, those if you are want to respond to that particular thing with regard to the wording of the contract, the creation of the implementation committee, for example, is on, I think this is just an idea in your head, right? I just threw that out there because yeah of a comment that came up at your last meeting right. about is this something that's going to sit on the shelf and my answer is no and I wanted to give you a justification of it's a possibility that I would hope be. it's more than a possibility but I would think the I planning board has not created such a committee right well or they wouldn't complete it until after the plan's done right, right. so it's, it's just uh, not part of the one article verbiage is, right. is, is again is the challenge is we really we're looking at what's in front of us that's what we have to vote on ultimately and yeah, we can get explanations if we are confused on a particular phraseology or something like right. that. But there was a fairly lengthy enumeration on your part about what it will mean, but that meaning is not in the Warren article. But I think that those elements that I noted, economic development and others, those are elements that you would see at phase two when they work on that part of it. When, when after phase one is done, that's where that would be. Do you have any, any gut two. sense of what phase two is going to cost us? At this point, I, I wouldn't want to just guess at a number for you. Well, it's more than more than eighteen thousand for sure. Yeah, it would be definitely six figures, right? I don't know that. It's going to. I can't. I'm not going to assume because okay. I don't know that. Okay. So you have no no sense at all in that. Okay, good. Any other questions, Regina? I believe you had your hand up. Well, yeah, and I think Jason addressed most of what I was going to say, but this eighteen thousand. We have an, we, right now we have a master plan, correct? We have a master plan. Technically. And yeah. technically, right. Yeah. But it hasn't really been updated wholly since 1980. 85. Okay, so 30-something 30 years. 34 years ago, yes. Yeah. So the question really is, phase one, is do the voters, does the town want to have a plan? Does it want to start beginning to work on an updated plan so that if we spend $18,000 a year or two from now, we can have all the relative pieces because right. the town of Hampton doesn't look anything like it did in 1985. Okay, so let's just, that plan is not applicable anymore. Right. So do we want to have an updated plan or do we want to just not really have applicable plan and just continue doing whatever 
we feel needs to be done because we don't have that plan to follow. I think that's really what the question is. This $18,000, we have no idea what in 2021, if we decide to go with phase two, whether it's gonna be $300,000, $500,000, $1.5 million. But the question is, do we wanna be proactive and have the plan, or do we just wanna strut along? That's the way I look at it. So mm -hmm. I hope that we do have a plan. Right. It's just in dire need of updating, correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Mr. Ladd. I was on the Area Commission when they updated the Area Commission's part of the master plan. <coughs> Hampton and Beach does not, Hampton Beach Advisory Committee, or Area Commission rather, does not have the authority to update the plan. Okay, if you want to be semantic. No, I want to be accurate because okay. we are a committee in detail okay. and we deal with accuracy. Well, we spent weeks investigating the attitudes of the community, which would be comparable to your vision concept, <coughs> getting input from the community. And in that process, the community completely reversed what the state had proposed for the redoing of Ocean Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It was a very successful process. There was a lot of intimate action, <coughs> but it was begun without a conclusion. The goal was to attempt to address an issue. That was a, a boulevard issue. This is a town issue. But nonetheless, you have the words term of vision within the warrant article. Mm -hmm. And all you really have to know is this is to begin a process to bring together a plan, ultimately, to protect the town, and I would suggest probably to save the town. There are two major flooding studies going on now through the Department of Public Works, which will have an enormous impact on the outcome of this <coughs> uh, proposed master plan, I would assume. Sea level rise, in my opinion, this is an existential threat to the existence of this town at some remote point in the future. These are ways to address it timely in the present with some logic and some consideration for what the appropriate thing to do might be. Uh, so I would strongly support beginning this process. And I would say as an anecdote, we have incredible infrastructure problems in terms of costing and repair in this town because we didn't plan ahead. The master plan to me is an attempt to start that process timely rather than 10 years from now <coughs> to address something uh, not very tall. You all set, Paul? Yeah. Just a little branch. Jason, you're hired by this town. You're a professional. Mm -hmm. You have the qualifications. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be the point person on this particular project. Right, of course. Okay. That's all I need to know. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Uh, Jason, I have a problem with master plans, period, in this town okay. because I have observed them being ignored when convenient <coughs> and overemphasized when convenient. Okay. All right. And so I have no faith in the master plan of being any valuable service other than to uh, confirm the particular points of view that those powers that be wish to have confirmed or not confirmed which is not the purpose of a master plan, as Bob had described and others have described, it, and you described as a master plan, is to give us guidance. The guidance is ignored when it's inconvenient. The particular irritation to me over the years was the Hampton Beach uh, master plan, which explicitly called for continuing, maintaining, actually, where it was to <coughs> maintain low-profile pro buildings at the beach. Planning board chose to ignore that so far as to, you know, endorse projects that were well above the, uh, the height limits of buildings that were in existence, and then went even further and, and proposed a, a warrant article to change the zoning laws to accommodate their preference without even giving any consideration to changing the master plan's verbiage on the matter. It was like the master plan didn't exist at all. Who cared whether it existed or not? We're going to do what we want. So why spend money on a plan in which they're going to do what they want anyway. 
That's the question I can't get over in my head and why I cannot support this war not vote. If you want to tell me why I'm wrong, feel free. But I, you're not obligated to. No, I, I'm just saying I think it's a very important part of the process. And, and you know, as nearly with nearly 20 years of experience as a planner, I've always used this as the basis for everything the community does. And I just think it's an important part. I know how to go through the process of making sure it's implemented. Um, and, and I will, as long as I'm here, I will do my best to make sure that that happens. My, my statement had nothing to do with yeah. you, Jason, at all, yeah. because those actions were not taken by you. They were taken mm -hmm. by the, the uh, planning board, primarily. Anyone else? Do we wish to vote on this now? Hopefully the answer is yes. Yes. Okay, all those in favor of recommending uh, the mass plan warrant article, please raise your hand. I count four. Those opposed, raise your hand. I count four. Four. So it is a four-four not recommended vote. Okay. Thank you for coming in, Jason, and helping us out. Thank you very much. You need any help carrying that out? I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put it in the elevator. <coughs> can I vote yes and nays? Put the yes first. <laughs> I was Brian Warburton was opposed. I was opposed. Mr. Pluff was opposed, and Mr. Moore was opposed. Everyone else was in favor. 